up, y'all? This is your girl, Dizzy, and welcome to episode seven of What You Got to Say. Of course, I got my crazy co-host in the building. What's up, Mr. Tyrone Gregory? Ready for war. Let's get it. And Miss Keela Mahogany. Hey, y'all. And Miss Cool Candice. What up? Time to shop it up. <laughs> <laughs> and to Mr. Kabana Black. That dude. That's what's up. So today, the uh, episode that has been chosen for us is the controversial show that is now on Netflix called Black as Beep. Black as fuck. Black AF. So they Black as fuck. I'll say it for you. Black as fuck. That's spunk. right. That's right. That's exactly what it is. Um, so um, if you have not seen it, uh, Black as Fuck is a brand new show that is on Netflix, and it is written and directed by Kenya Barris. Uh, and if you guys don't know who he is, he is the, ri- the writer and basically creator of shows such as Blackish, Grownish, Mixedish. Um, he worked on America's Next Top Model and also The Game and several other movies and shows that you are affiliated with. However, in the world that we live in, there's people on both sides of the fence saying whether or not this show is good, whether or not it's bad. So what you got to say? I need my first comment on Black AF. This okay. Listen. Uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, come on, Keela. This show. Go ahead, up. Keela. My bad. Go. No, my my fault. What you want to say? <laughs> no, oh. go ahead, Keela. You never start. So you. Yeah, need to start we, on this I one. want you to start. I'm gonna leave it back. So, I loved Black AF. It was hilarious to me the first time that I watched it. Now I went back and watched it again. Maybe it doesn't last, you know, the second time around. But the first time I watched it, I thought it was so funny. Okay, why did you like it? I thought, um, I think I just got the humor where the kids were being disrespectful. I've never been disrespectful to my parents. And so maybe watching it play out on screen was just, I, maybe that was just so funny to me. Um, and I liked the relationship between the husband and wife, even not towards the end because they, you know, started going through some things, not to give away any spoilers, but um, I thought like the banter that they had was real playful for, at times. So I did like that. Okay, okay. Mr. Tyrone Gregory. <laughs> so I loved it. I loved it because who better to play on a stereotype about yourself than you? He made all of these shows, blackish, mixed this, grownish, all this, right? But then he thought about it. In my mind, he thought about it. I can't speak for Mr. King. But in my mind, he thought about it. I done made all these shows about black this, black that, black that, grownish, mixed this. Okay, well, just let me be black as fuck. <laughs> and then what he did in my mind is what he did. He took a, a sitcom, a white sitcom, and flipped it around and made it black. Okay. Because all of us know better than to talk to our parents the way that they talk to their parents. But guess what? I don't give a hell who any of you are watching and all of my co-hosts. At the end of the day, we have a language that we can speak with our our spouses and our children that we won't let no one get away with. Okay. Okay. That's not facts. You uh, have that experience where maybe the like the way you communicate in your house. Well, you ain't got no kids. Yeah. You ain't got no kids. Dang. Dang. Just can't just the, <laughs> and, and he gonna say some shit like that right after Mother's Day. <laughs> I love you. Hey, Keila, you know I love you. But I'm just saying, like, you don't you don't have kids, so I understand what you're saying. Because like I have kids. I have grown kids. I have I have a son that's 23 years old, and then I got a daughter that's about to turn 10. Mm. And it's certain things that my kids, I allow them to get away with. But at the same time, number one, no outsider is going to get away with that. And then number two, you better watch your mouth. Okay. 
Okay. That's just real. That I mean, any parent know that. All right, cool, Candace. What about you? Oh, I'm mm. sorry. What'd you say, Keila? <laughs> no, I wanted to mumble. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Kiki. I'm sorry. I love you. All right, cool, Candace. Come on, mumble you, ministry. <laughs> Um, I thought the show was hilarious. Uh, my husband and I were watching it, and we got a good crack out of it. Like, we laughed really hard throughout this show. Yeah. There were oh, my God, moments, and then there were times where it's like, oh, hell no. Uh-huh. <laughs> but overall, it was funny to me. I, I took it as just light entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, we know that, you know, our kids aren't going to talk to us like that because they have no teeth and be hanging on to life by a thread on a, a, a naked tree in the winter over an ice over lake that's thin that's all ice. I was saying. All of that. Um, mm -hmm. It ain't happening because I don't do it to my parents and I'd be damned if my kids do it to me, you know, so on and so on. Right. So, um, that part was, I don't want to say oblivious, but just kind of, I know that part wasn't going to saturate with me because my kids aren't going to do that. And I've that never was the entertainment of it. Right. right. It's funny. So I know I'd never do that to my parents. You know, when I was a kid to an adult, like my grown self still was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> 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 <To my> mama. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I've never disrespect my parents like that ever. Um, God rest my, my dad's soul, but you know, I've never do that in, in any way. So to me, it was, you know, you know that part's disrespectful, but at the same time, because it's TV, it's just supposed to be funny. It, it, okay. There's no, you no need to dig deep into that part in, in okay. my, okay. Um, but uh, there were different aspects of it. Like when you could see like he was, I want to say he was kind of trying to pattern it off of the show Blackish. Um, mm -hmm. The way everything was going with it, kind of just showing, like, hey, we got all these kids, you know, but we still, you know, I'm still, you know, kind of dating my spouse. I'm still in a relationship with my spouse, but at the same time, I still have to go to work. You know, we are kind of like a power couple, but my wife's doing some other stuff, you know, just kind of like they're just trying to figure it out. And that's what it seemed like. Yeah. And same thing we're all doing as well. It's like, okay, we didn't really have a blueprint for how we were supposed to do life, period. Mm -hmm. You look at where your parents were compared to where we are now, it's like your parents in their wildest dreams wouldn't think that, you know, you would be in the position where you are at this point in your life. And if you look back to, at your grandparents, they would never do the same. They could never, you know, imagine that. And so when we're looking back at, you know, shows that we grew up on, Martin, The Cosby Show, Different World, stuff like that, I'm thinking back and I never saw Black people argue on TV as far as like a married couple that, like The Cosby Show, for instance. Cliff and Claire, they were always on the same page. You're like, all right, there were times where Cliff just didn't say nothing. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. There were some episodes. There were some episodes. <laughs> I, I look, 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 Cliff Alicia episode. was digging into Cliff. <laughs> I had to bring my hand on that one. Because you sound like Ayana Vans now, right now, or how do you say that woman name? Get, get your vowels and consonants in order. Jasmine, <laughs> Van Nett. How you, I don't know how to say her name. I love Van her. Van. Van. Huh? Van Van. I, thank you, Keela. What she said. <laughs> we what, about, that's how you sound it right then. We about, to text it. It. We, about to, we about to text it to you broken out phonetically. Okay? Anyway, can Cabana say what he thought about the show? <laughs> Y'all ain't going to get on my ass. I can just bypass Candace. Yeah, I got be easy with Grace. I love it. I love it. This is why we don't do shows at night because people don't know how to act. Look, so. I'm sorry, Candace. I'm sorry. Please finish this, but you sound like a Yana Yad Yad Naminas. What? You sound like her. Ayana. Hell no. <laughs> you up there dancing. And, and this is, this oh, is. Huh? What you got to say after dark? Yes, it is. That's <laughs> exactly what it is. Yes. They don't know how to act. They don't know how to act. They don't know how to act. 
Okay, KB, go ahead and chime in. What's your What's your views on Black AF? Okay, so I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to do my uh, studying. I decided to get into the gig and really re research. So you might be a little bit surprised. But, well, first, I definitely have to say one thing about the Cosby Show. I've watched every single Cosby Show. And the mother was known for wrecking shop and chastising, but she did chastisements with class. Yeah. Very Dominique Devereaux, you know, kind of feel. Um, but the show itself, I, I, I think for me, at first, you know, it was like how I feel about Greg V. I have a love-hate relationship with that man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like he tells the truth, but I don't feel like he has to cuss. So I, I end up not watching him. So when I watched the show and really took it in, it did kind of remind me of kind of how Black-ish and Grown-ish goes. It kind of starts off as, as an extreme, and then it kind of grows into this storyline of yeah. trying to find and figure out their way. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest problem that I have with it is, I won't say necessarily cursing, but for me, I don't have kids, but I'm a teacher a counselor, I work with kids, and they talk just like that. And I you feel like that's where, <laughs> that, <laughs> and I feel like that is where the missing part is. I think we know that parents are not gonna let their kids talk like that, but I feel like when I watch the show, if I was a young kid and watching it, oh, I would use those new curse words that I just learned on my friends. Mm -hmm. And when you go to work in school-age facilities, oh, oh, trust and believe, they talk just like those kids. And that is where, for me, the show is cool. I do like the parents in a way. I, I, I caught myself off guard liking them, but I felt like they were super dumb. Like, are you really that dumb? Like, why are you <laughs> acting like that? You know better. But that's like that's TV, the bro. But, but see, that's the thing. I had to think about it. I think I'm the type of person because I always loved Cosby Show, Family Matters, um, shoot, Jefferson's, Sanford and Son, like all these different shows, they just kind of kept, it was real life mixed with TV. So when you see real life mixed with TV, gone reality, love and hip hop kind of thing, where for me, it's still scripted, it feels so scripted that it's unreal. And mm -hmm. that's probably the biggest thing is like, when I was sitting down there, I was like, I probably will not really deliberately watch this again because it feels like reality TV on acid. And mm -hmm. I'd rather it be more like, oh, this is my example. Let me chop it up like Candace. Let me chop it for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everybody hates Chris was like one of the best example of blackest AF without going to the cursing extreme. Mm. And that's where, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I feel like when I saw Everybody Hates Chris, I was like, that's my household. That's how- Oh, you don't, you, you, really just, you really just don't like the cursing. And that's it. It's that, that part to me, it kind of, but that is the funny thing is, the cursing is the selling point. Mm. And that, the whole point of the, the show. It's black ass. That's the selling point. So people that maybe don't get in a curse and mm -hmm. like, it don't bother them. And that's why Greg B and speakers like that, they do well because some people like, that's just curse words. But for me... Yeah, because I don't give a fuck about curse words. words. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, 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 a, it's a curse word. Right. So I oh, feel like when you say a curse words, word, you bring a curse, curse words. Right. You're right. Okay. Right. This is why I Clearly. love my brother. He educates still sharp and still. That's right. Right. Okay. Okay. So and you dizzy. <laughs> All right. I am in no I am <laughs> by no way, shape, form, or fashion a conservative nor prude person. I find comedy in some of the most inappropriate things 
on the planet, okay? So two, three weekends ago, my husband and I sat down and decided, minus the kids, to binge watch Black AF. Yes, uh, minus the kids, yes. And minus the kids, <laughs> right. It's, it's always right. minus the kids, though. I mean, we're no, all responsible. It's not, but the, the problem is, for in a lot of households, it's not always minus the kids. Oh, shit. Because a lot, of times, unfortunately, a lot of times, unfortunately, when Black people see Black people on TV, they think it's family. They but think they it's think a family it's okay show. for whatever they're doing. Right, and it's not, and it's not. So we sat down. I love... Let me tell you what I love about it first, okay? I love the intro sequence. I love the um, historical connections to what is happening in the show. Yeah. I think it is hilarious how every single episode is in some way, shape, or form because of slavery. Because of slavery. <laughs> I love that. I think that, to me, those pieces are genius. The historical connections to the comedy, per se, are genius, the way they try to do it. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> where I have a problem, and this is not with Kenya Barris, the person. This is with Kenya Barris, the character from Black AF. Mm. He is a whole bitch. Oh, oh, I agree with you. And I and, and I had to use that curse. I'm sorry, Cabana. No, 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 no. he is a whole he bitch. Is. And I'm going to tell you why. He is the worst example to me right now on television. Of, of what a black dad man. can be? Of what exactly. a black man can be and supposed to be. Now, I, I understand agree. he probably was intentionally supposed to be stereotypical like that. I get it. But you are so, he is so weak in that household. The mere sound of his voice. <laughs> hold on, hold on, Dizzy, Dizzy, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is my favorite impression. Hold on, let me do this. Hold on, let me do this. So, like, seriously, I just don't feel like you as a mom should be twerking. But I did pay for it. Yeah. The whole video. See, yeah, I, almost, yeah. I, I, almost, I almost want to throw all my wine up on the camera. The, I don't, I, he, he is so weak, and I don't, I don't like that. And and if he was intentionally written to be that, weak, I think it was. Then he did a great job because I couldn't stand that in him. That's the first issue. So all of what is it? Eight, seven episodes. All seven epi eight episodes. Eight grated my nerves because he was talking. Yeah. So that was the first thing. Um, the second thing, I am all down for comedy. I truly am. Come on. But let any Black individual in my family form their lips to call my husband a dick, and you are a child, Come on. murder would have been the case. It's not even remotely funny that that child, one, call her father back, and two, he call her that back. And that, to, okay, so that, that interaction with the most disrespectful children on the planet, I couldn't find it funny. That wasn't even a little bit funny to me it, at all. Like, there were parts in the show I laughed at. I will give you that. The whole high in the club situation, hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. But the way those children spoke, one to each other and two to their parents, totally cut me off. And I thought I was being prude, <laughs> but when that situation happened on screen, my husband grabbed the remote and paused it. He said, here we go with my husband's accent. Wait a second. <laughs> wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Did he just call, did she just call her dad a dick? She would be dead. This episode would be over. I bust out laughing because he's right. The entire series would have ended on that episode 
because she would have died, dad would have been in jail, they'd have been broke and homeless, bottom line. So I didn't find that piece funny at all, okay? But, but, but I find you quoting Maurice, I find that <laughs> yeah, shit that funny. Was hilarious. Thank you. So I did find that funny. Um, I did find funny some of the banter between the husband and wife. Yeah. Because now, not when they were disrespectfully mean to each other, not that part. But we all know that in the household, there's some things that we as moms know way ahead of time than the dad knew. And we kind of act like we didn't know. Yeah, I don't fucking already. know. Like, Candace, do not act like you do not do that I, shit. There's some times where I, I be, exactly, don't agree. I mean, I don't mind admitting to it because later I'd be like, you can't prove it. I <laughs> mean, but, but like, you know, for real, Candace, but, do not lie. You do that shit, right? Yeah, I, do I, not lie. I would be like, yo, he's been doing that for like three months. And he probably has. And I'd be like, don't you remember I told you about it? But because we know that we can tell you about something, men, and you remember for the next five minutes, ten minutes. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 I gotta Tyrone. stand up. I hold on, you can't stand up. Do I need? Hold on, Greg. Before you speak, do I need to screenshot our information on when we're supposed to start this and how many times <laughs> you question how many times we start this? Dude, y'all make me smoke cigarettes. <laughs> Let's get my umbrella. So, uh, right, right. So no, 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 no. Stop. Now this is where the show pauses, and now the we're not pausing. We still recording. I know we still record. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Listen, hold on, because y'all the only two mothers on here. Okay. Why do y'all even put us in that position? We don't. We know you're going to forget. We know. But y'all will say yes to shit that we already just said no to because... You know that. Stop. Stop. No. Hold on now. Did we... No. I'll tell my kid. Go ask your daddy because I don't know. I will do that on certain things. I do the same on certain things. Go ask your dad. Don't even ask But y'all know for a fact. Y'all know as, as, as the beautiful queens y'all are. Yeah. Clean that up. Clean that up. <laughs> and the wives y'all are. I'm listening. But, but for real, y'all don't even have to know if they talk to their daddy yet. And if y'all feel like, all right, okay, and we already said no, them kids know. They come right to y'all and they be like, can we do it? That's the play mom. And, and y'all don't know if we child say does Y'all say yes. Every child say yes. Every child yes. Plays yes. That's the kids, and that's tr them trying to play both sides. Right. Like, it shouldn't be a chance of that. I'm going to go ask my mama, because she don't know already. No. Nah, right. Exactly. That's what they do. That's what they do. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's, let, me, let, that's, let me, oh no, let me be an adult and say I know that kids do that. Yes, they do. But if mom and dad already know kid should not be able to infiltrate. Sometimes it happens. And I'm and it's and a lot of the times it's not intentional. But and you I'm see it in the show. Yes, you see it in the show. You see and it I the agree. Show. I didn't say but that I didn't have to stay on the same page with my husband. If he's already said no to the kids and I know he said no. Oh right. no no I yeah, agree that's not what you. that's not the parts I'm talking that's about. That's not what I'm saying. That's not the parts I'm talking about. I'm talking about Mom has already had a conversation with the child about something. And said she was good with it. And, and said, then, hey, I'm good. It's not that dad said no. Come on dad now. The didn't dad, know. The dad didn't know. The dad doesn't even know the birth dates of his children in this show. Yeah, that's so terrible. that's absolutely terrible. So you so yes, if I'm the one that's home all day and I'm managing the household. I'm going to say, yeah, you can go. Because you know what they're purple. doing. You know where they yeah. at. Right. I, I'm going to say, yeah, you can go change your hair purple. I don't have to check with my husband. Can my daughter do her hair purple? 
because he's not there. So no, hey, and, and I'm not saying that in no way, shape, or form. Anyone watching, any man watching, hey, you better go ask your wife what right. the hell is going on. Now, me as a mom, I will ask my husband, hey, what do you think? Xavier wanted to get that whole highlight Odell Beckham thing in his hair. For me, it's not a problem. But I know my husband. So I'm like, let me, and you know, and you know what I said? Let me ease your dad into this decision. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because his first reaction is going to be no. I already know it. He's going to say no. Now, is that a black as fuck moment? Or is that like uh, all people, all humans, or... It's a conversation. I don't know, because guess what? I don't know if a white household has that conversation about changing their daughter's hair purple or pink. I don't know. I don't but think they I have do. that conversation. But I, and I do. think they have that argument. They right, but I, I do. wouldn't have had that conversation before. The kid just would have did it on their own and came back and be like, oh, my bad. I didn't know I couldn't do it. Right. Now, hold on. See, I'm not doing that. Waters. We Look, in, waters, in, in, a black, in a black AF home, the farthest we'll go is put some peroxide on our hair and go outside and let it gradually change. <laughs> No, Dizzy, that's, that's what you. I did. I didn't ask my parents, could I die? I my said, that nigga, that was you. For Rockside, and then be in the sun and be like, oh, I got highlights like Candace now. My mama, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Pow, 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 Purple, pink, blue, red. My mom, nah, they not having it. Yeah, nah. my dad going for that. No, your hair going to stay the whatever color it is that you was born with. Right. What? Those uh, colored contacts that everybody had back in the day, <laughs> and blue and green. My dad went off Baby. on our best friends that she's like a big sister to me. And so, you know, she would come over the house. You know, that was her dad because her dad was out of the picture. So when she got ready to go to prom, she had this cute little outfit on. It wasn't a dress because he told her no dresses. <laughs> so she had on this nice little pants. It was bad. It was bad as hell. It was Your dad had that much power? Yes. yes. She walked in with hazel contact, and he's like, you don't get your out of here with them fake eyes. Get out of my house. Like, he went, and I was like, oh. And I, <laughs> hey, remind me to put a suit on when I meet your dad. <laughs> yeah. Remind me to have a suit on like Steve Harvey <laughs> right. when I meet your dad. So... So like I said, I just, I, 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 there were just, it was, there were too many negatives for me. Now, I, now what I will say is this. Mm -hmm. I did watch all eight episodes. Me too. Because I wanted to give it a chance. Did I laugh at some things in the show? Yes. But my overall case on this is, Nah, I'm I'm gonna pass when season two comes out. I'm not gonna watch it. It it, it I probably won't either. I don't think he wanted to do a season two. I listened to a podcast that he did with Ti on Expeditiously, mm -hmm. and he was mentioning you know some of the things on how this uh, affects his real life. Um, he said a lot of the parts of the show were based off of his real life, but of course you know you have to add the reality aspect and some things were scripted. He said, but a lot of the the scenarios and and storylines and things that happened actually did happen in his own life these were things that his kids were asking and talking about and stuff like that i don't know i can't i don't think he mentioned whether they use that type of language right whether they were I'm about you know, to say, because if they do then that makes me feel like he's a bitch in his own household right but I don't, I, he didn't mention um, that aspect. I, I don't remember if T.I. asked him that question. But she, why you, hold on, why you laugh? Because she's laughing at Cabana's reaction every time we say a cuss word is not in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, look, no, look. I, like, you know, Dizzy, I definitely gave it a chance and I watched it and everything like that. And it, you know, it's entertaining, but you know, I'm going to say my word. Of course. Oh, you I know. know. Hey, that's why this is what you got to say. <laughs> and that's no, what the fuck we got to say. Is, we say badass fucking words. It's like, it's not, it's like, 
<laughs> but it's like there's no actually and you know the funny thing is i think that what he did was sometimes people create things and make them extreme you know you do what you become an extremist in order to get the point across i think his show was there to show an extreme but sometimes just like any good boat that has a hole in it it is going to go underwater if people don't all kind of understand it because i feel like once i watched the show i got the concept right i just i just was like i think there it once you got to the like the the last episode i was just like um dizzy when i was like oh so he's not gonna ever get some balls he's not gonna ever <laughs> stand up no come you know, on like, he's not gonna, so you're not gonna no save epiphany. your wife you're right. not going to oh, save your wife, wife from drowning because yeah. you got to take off your expenses. Yeah, no, that first. pissed me. Oh, I that was pissed high. me off. I was mad. That pissed me off. Because like, I right. dare Shelly. The most you could have done is take your shoes off and haul ass into that water. Hold on. Hold on. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. But for real, if that woman that I say it I love and I put a ring on. Thank you. I'm gonna tell you right now. She already know right now <laughs> anything that we have that's materialistic, it has nothing bearing to who the fuck she is. I agree. I agree. I didn't, I did, I didn't, that Everything. episode that episode made me really that piece but that's yeah. really bad. I was even on board with him because, see, I know we all have a little bit of petty in us. I even. Right, oh, no, his white petty is when, when she, when he found out that she had this whole book tour book and, and, and that was supposed to be their vacation, I understood why he was upset. Yeah. If you wanted to do this, just let me know. Let me know and be mad. Don't right. let me find out you've basically been lying. Yeah. Right about what's going you on. You plotting behind my back the whole time. Right. Huh. So I was cracking up when he was like, "I'm gonna be so petty. I'm gonna go stay in this trash room because I'm that." <laughs> Out now that I laughed at. I appreciate the fact that he came to her. Hey, 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 I'm but this, sorry. hey, I'm that. I'm that petty. Right. And she, I'm, my I'm wife will tell you. She will tell you. I'm that petty. I'm that nigga. Like, right. I'm that petty. Right, I will get, but not going to save your I'll get my own fucking room. I'm gonna stay in this motherfucker. You stay in yours, okay? Am I that petty? Yes, I am. We can be. But what you're not gonna do is let me drown. Right, I'm not gonna let your chain drown, and your shirt. That yeah. I, I don't give a fuck about that. that. Dizzy, oh, you I can know. ask my wife. You can ask my wife today. Hold on, what you say, Keila? Last time, go what ahead, Keila. Are y'all saying or are y'all leaving? If leaving what? Mother doesn't come and uh, try to save you. Oh, y'all being together. If yeah. my husband doesn't come try to save me when I'm drowning, it's over. It's the fuck over. I'm a grown man knowing that shit. If yeah. I didn't jump in that water, I would not expect her to respect me a day in life after that. You show me where I am, where the exactly. priority lies. Right. In your <laughs> life. You are more concerned about materialistic items right. than the mm -hmm. livelihood of the mother of your children. Now, again, it's supposed to be funny. Funny ha ha. But that shit wasn't that funny to me. That, that, part was, that wasn't funny to me. But I mean, this grown is the, ass the question man, that I have for you. I'm not going to ask you. That shit ain't funny. It's not. This is the question that I have for Tyron Gregory. Yes, sir. Listening. Because you are that person that actually loves the show you know me listening to in context this conversation that we're having right i've always said you know you either half in or you all in i'm an all in type of person and so the show you know it's like you either to you know people will choose like well i don't like this part well i love this part but the show is based off of for me the very buffoonery kind of stuff that you're saying, like you may like or don't like. And I think that's where I feel like the show must have failed because in it, you still have people debating. And the thing about it is the debates become intense that they turn in almost slightly uh, an argument. 
And that means that the show is not doing what it's supposed to do because even a show that I disagree with, if it has a beginning, middle, and end, right? then what happens is you're able to walk through it. But I'm listening just on the outside. I'm like, okay, you like this, but you don't like this. But this is, the show is based off of, to me, ignorance on steroids. So it's like, I'm not <laughs> at what he's doing because I all don't like the whole show but if I like the show then I'm not really am I not supposed to not like get into the gig you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so that's why I do and when, when young people watch shows like this this is always my concern is if is it good enough that a young person that is 10 12 13 15 can watch it without any parental supervision Oh, absolutely not. No, because the see, show see. itself is not, you can't say that shows are adult TV anymore because I always adult TV no more. They don't right. do that anymore. I, I mean, I was the type of child who would have watched this with my dad. I probably would, you know, I would have been that child. Yeah. But I still never. I would have too. Like I was 37, maybe even, you know, before I was even looking at myself like I could say something that wasn't you know maybe wasn't disrespectful but just stood on my side of things and not on my dad and so even though I grew up watching shows that had cussing in it or movies that were rated R and stuff like that I don't think that translated into me being a uh, you know problematic child either right? right and disrespecting my my parents because they still had the discipline in the house right but you do, I believe though, that you do have children that are lost, that they yeah. feel that all TV yeah. is reality. Yeah. So they're like, oh, this is, this is the example of what I'm supposed to follow. And without the guidance, see, and, and that's what I like that, that you and Tyrone both said, this is a show I would have watched with my dad, which means while you're watching it and you hear this girl speak disrespectfully to her father, you know, you don't even have to have a conversation. When she came out her mouth, you'd have looked up at your daddy and your daddy would have been like, don't even. Don't even try. Don't even try. Have the conversation. But the problem is, is that you <clears throat> do have children that are sitting there watching this like, oh, this is the family dynamic, especially more so right now. Right now. Because I've been policing you all day long with stay at home and, and, and teaching you your stuff. I need a couple hours without you. Go watch something. And where are they going? Netflix, YouTube, and can watch this unsupervised. Now, but, I, did, but I did have someone on I the need, phone. I need, I need to make sure I understand my brother. Mm -hmm. okay. So what didn't you understand, like, Okay, I guess I'm I'm asking the wrong question. I was trying to remember and understand what you were saying. No, I was just saying like the difference between. <laughs> but no, because my brother was talking to me. My brother was talking to me. Right, right. I was saying like you know it 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 was in at one moment I was sitting listening to everybody and I was saying to myself people that love the show. It are having this kind of that they don't even like things in the show and I've always been kind of like an all in type of person not a halfway so when you call the show black AF and it's based off of to me severe ignorance which is entertaining then I guess how do you decide well I'm not I'm not with that you know what I mean? So, because I so feel like are the you whole asking show, like how do I be like I'm good with this part but I'm not good with that part yeah Right. It's because I'm a good grown ass man, bro, bro. <laughs> what that mean? What How mean? does that like, answer the question though? Is, and I get that. No, 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 no. I feel like that. I'm listening, but, bro. The overall. Talking. I mean like overall. overall you're like, not just not talking just about this you. show. Overall. You're talking about issues as a whole. So yeah, let, me, let okay, me just try okay. to make sure that I understand what you're asking too, because yeah, I, I yeah. like where you're going. Okay. So Over, if overall, I'm saying, if I'm saying wrong, correct me. So what you're saying is that, okay, okay, if someone says they love something, let's just take Black AF out of it. Yeah, he, he wanted to understand why I liked it. Something, and you say, oh, I love this show. 
However, these five things I don't like about the show. How can mm -hmm. you still love it if you don't like these things? And at what point does it have to get to you to for you to not love it and be like, nah, I'm not with it? Right. Okay. So, bro, right. that's what I'm saying. I like the show for what it is. Number one, it's just entertaining. Mm -hmm. But what I also love, now, I like the show for entertainment. But what I love about the show is it shows everything that we are talking about as a collective right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it, it invokes conversation. That's what and, I'm okay. And, and okay. the beautiful thing is we have five beautiful minds that, that can understand even to go this deep. Right. Right. Okay? So now, I love the fact that the kids talk shit to their parents on the show. Because it shows if my kids do catch an episode, because I don't let my kids watch it. Because mm -hmm. it's adult humor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's adult humor. Mm -hmm. So I don't let my kids watch it. But what I love about it is if I did let them watch it, my kids, and I can't speak for everyone else's kids, they'd be like, Daddy, why are you saying that to their mm -hmm. parents? Exactly. Okay. And right. And I can explain. It invokes conversation. See, Kenya Burris, or Barris, or however you say his last name, he's a fucking genius. In my mind, he's a fucking genius. Because he figured out how to take what TV dubs as a sitcom. And he turned white suburbia sitcom into a black sitcom. But he made it controversial on purpose. The nigga had a whole episode where there was a picture that was nothing but blackness. That was a dumbass clip of yeah. <laughs> And that was dumb as fuck. Yeah. Was, it was I, dumb as fuck. But I understood it. what, what, because my entertaining mind, my comedian mind, my third eye, I understood what he was trying to do. He Try wanted it. to look dumb as fuck to those that are dense, that don't even look past, mm. but he wanted those that actually are thinkers to look at it. And then he gave you what the answer to the picture was at the end of the episode. The, but yeah. to me, that's the only piece of the episode that was genius, is that everyone, he himself could not explain and articulate what that piece of art meant. He couldn't. He just wanted to spend a whole lot of money on a big ass piece of art and he didn't even know what it meant. The Cause that's what rich friend, ass niggas do. And, 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 that's right. what I rich thought, ass I niggas do. You. To me, the only, the only genius part was bringing in the actual artist of that painting to explain what the painting meant. That's the only piece. It was. Of the entire, and that's what I was saying. There's bits and pieces, and, and I guess maybe I'm like the total polar opposite of and what no, and no, I don't want to make it seem like, like I, I, I like. I don't want to seem like I make it like, oh, I love the whole show. Like, I love everything about it. No. But I'm an artist as well. So mm -hmm. it's like I watch it and I see pieces. And it upset me. But then I watch it and I'm like, oh no, that's dope as fuck. And then I think about it as if, what if I could direct my own show? What would I do? Yeah. I wouldn't do it like this. Doing what he can do <laughs> because do like he can direct his own show. Yeah. I mean, and I get it. I had somebody, so um, a few weeks ago when, th when I first watched it, I did place on my Facebook page and just said, I'm unsure. I, I wasn't there yet. I only had like three episodes. 
So I was like, I'm not sure how I feel about this yet. So we had somebody who happens to be on this show <coughs> say, I see this as rich kid behavior, which still doesn't oh, excuse Candace. it. Mm -hmm. But it still doesn't excuse it, but I see that why. That was you? It. Yes, it was Candace. So <laughs> I'm about to say, my that was Candace all, all day long. My question to y'all is, was the behavior of the family, do you feel in general, excused more because the family was rich? Ooh. Mm. So I will not say it was That's a dope ass question though, Candace. That's mm. a dope ass question. I don't want to say it was excused, but it's kind of expected if, if you can kind of look at it like that. Okay. No, because I would not expect if I come into a million dollars, two million dollars, three million, five million, I don't give a fuck. If my kids ever talk to me like that, I'm busting ass. You yeah, can kidding. say that if, but if we ain't in that situation, it's, it's great right. to say if we ain't there. Great to say it now, like I, oh, I woulda, shoulda, coulda, but I we're not in that situation. The difference in, I mean, I think they kind of touched on it in their last episode when they were saying that the parents may possibly get a divorce, you know, based off of how things were going and how they were going back and forth and right. um, banter between the two of them. So the two oldest girls were talking to the younger siblings and they were like, hey, we didn't always have a nanny. We didn't always have a maid. We didn't I saw that. I saw that. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like, well, what happened to all the dishes that were in the sink? That was like, we washed them. Like, so they understand, they were just disrespectful as well, but right. they understood the part of, hey, well, we that's didn't- That's the genius I'm talking it. about. Mm -hmm. Right, they, we didn't always have it like this. So they would understand the independence and the hard work aspect of watching, you know, she was talking about her mom when she was actually working in the courtroom and, right. you know, seeing their dad working and moving his way up completely different to where these younger kids are who showed up with a silver spoon that right. was platinum with diamonds around the sides and on the ends and, and that's all they've ever known. Mm -hmm. So in, in that aspect, you know, the the younger general well I don't call them generation, but the younger kids that they have right. aren't weren't exposed to their life prior to when they hit it big basically. So, you know, on the come up, it, that's totally different. To right. me, the show causes conversation. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Whether you like it or not, you know, it, it, it causes conversation. And it allows people to play devil's advocate. It allows people to play both sides. It's like, nah, you know how uh, even when uh, Cabana was asking, you know, why do you like this? Or how can you say that you love it? But, you know, you dislike this, this, and this. It's plenty of shows out that I love. But there's parts of them I don't like. I got, there's mm -hmm. many artists out there that I love, but they make some songs that I don't like. Right. That's not you probably the, listen to the beat. So, you know, same thing with, um, what was I going to say? Um, like, <laughs> sorry. looking at, at how they, they get to, you know, whatever um, threshold that they're at. Right. The, trying to find herself, basically. She was like, hey, I already did the lawyer thing, almost died in childbirth, you know, all that type of stuff. And he said, take some time off. Cool. All right. Now that I'm better, I need to find myself. Like she didn't necessarily know whether she wanted to go back into the courtroom. She was like, all right, I can do something else. Right. And there's problem with like picking different sides and figuring out what you want to do. Same thing we would do in life. But like, all right, I want a career change. I'm tired of doing this shit. Like I don't want to go see those same people at work anymore. They make me scratch my butt when I'm looking at them because they're <laughs> <laughs> not right. fired and <laughs> bills in the meantime. So you know stuff like that. And right, and I believe that's a true turning point because I think that sometimes you know they even say oftentimes when people are are choosing careers when they come out of college or whatever you know, less and less over the years, people are choosing careers to become financially stable, not right. careers to do what they love. And right. this mm -hmm. mom specifically, she, I mean, not saying that she didn't have love for being a lawyer, uh, for a doctor. No, no, because she kept making she sure showed, people knew she, she was about her bar. She wanted everyone to know that I'm a lawyer, but I don't, I don't know if that was for status reasons or if that was what she really loved. 
but now she's finding what she loved because she has the stability to do so. You have the comfort, you have the comfort level to fail. Yeah. And, and, and a, a whole, lot of people never reach that's a whole that different threshold. show. Yeah, people never a lot of times people don't reach that threshold where, okay, I'm No, no, time out. I apologize, Dizzy. That's a whole different show though. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's a whole different show. Because and, and and look and look, KB, you gotta back me on this one, bro. Mm. That is a whole different show <laughs> because you are entrepreneur yourself. Are you not? Yes, he's, he's his own small business. KB? Yeah. I didn't even know who the <laughs> fuck he was when you hit me on fucking Facebook from a different uh -huh. page. Didn't even know who the right. fuck that was. <laughs> right, right. 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 Okay, now, with each one of you women that I love, and I'm thankful I can call y'all my sisters. But that happens. Like, mm -hmm. Candace, what, what do you do? I'm a DOD civilian. Oh. But what do you do? She's a DOD civilian. Oh, that's all. Look, look, look that's all. Look, I need don't, be, don't be asking us to put our government sh all right, on this all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ab the dog is out of control. Oh, don't worry. Hey, There's well, gonna be a whole lot hey, of sound effects hey, on this show. This it's all good. This need to be seven or whatever after the after. I don't know after. what we gonna do, bro. Look, we don't know what we gonna we do. We gonna lose all sponsorship after this. Uh, <laughs> but 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 Keila, Keila, what you do though? What do you do? I make wigs. Free. You been quiet this whole <laughs> fucking episode, nigga. Because you been oh my God. My what is happening? <laughs> okay, we about to bring this back on track. I do have a question about- I was on track. Bruh. <laughs> are you? Are, are we going somewhere? Let's go somewhere. What's up? Keela makes weird, <laughs> Cabana sing, and is the awesomest creative on the planet, and we DOD civilians. What's up? Where we going? But at the end of the day, we are all still black as fuck, and we do what we have to do for our families. Correct. But on that show, that man, though we all said it, he act like a bitch. He don't stand up. And how the fuck are you going to be that strong of a person that you can have a show like that, but you really don't even show that black man standing up. I don't know. I, I and I think he did it on purpose. I, I, I yeah. that's what I think. He did and it that's on the purpose. Genius that I think. I think he want people to have these arguments. Agreed. Black, hold on. What are you talking? What black man standing up? Kenya. <laughs> And he had all this money. So, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So, now, so now I'm the one that ain't it, even thinking. No, I mean, it w because it was about his family. So the person. Well, what I was trying to say, Keela, truthfully, was he was genius because he made the show about black people being able to get to that level. Get to that level. But that black man being a bitch in the whole situation. Okay, gotcha. Well, mm. I will say this. Um, I did go ahead and uh, based off the suggestion of, um, I'm not sure if it was Candace or Gregory, but based off their uh, uh, suggestion of watching the T.I. Um, um, episode, uh, not episode, um, in interview. interview. I did go and watch that um actually today. I watched it today before the show. Um, and again, I understand what he was trying to do. I get it. But it was again, genius. You're not, not going to not not reach everybody in the same way. So, I mean, just right here on this show, you got three people who love it, three people who's like, eh, not quite hit the mark for me. I think you hit the mark. 
with Blackish. I think he hit the mark with Mixedish. I think he hit the mark with the other one, Grownish. I think the other things that he touched on, he had parts in Barbershop, The Final Cut. He wrote, he had pending, he had, had helped, excuse me, he assisted with pinning Shab. He assisted with pinning Little. He assisted with pinning Girls Trip. He assisted with all those other things that I just named. Coming to America too? Right, coming to America too. I support Kenya Barris on all those other things, uh, all those other uh, uh, things. But this one was not for me. And I agree with Candace. I can love an artist and hate an album that you put out. Oh no, I can agree with that you I can agree too. So again, I don't have any issues with Kenya Barris, the person. I just did mm. not like the character that he created for the show. I just that one that that, hit, that character did not do anything for the black father, and it didn't do anything for the black man or the I, family. It it didn't do it or didn't do anything for that, but it was great uh comedy it was it was it was great you know something to watch okay all right so we gonna round it up because we had an hour and we don't want our shows to be longer than an hour because they not gonna watch it if it's longer than an hour so we're gonna go around the room and then we're gonna get it well you talk. look like uh you look like uh oprah right now thank you very much i need that oprah money though but my kids won't <laughs> act like they do on black um so candace last thoughts on black af what's up um i think it was a, a great entertainment um it allowed me to get some good laughs out of it there were parts of it i loved there were parts of it i didn't like and that i didn't agree with um but overall i thought it was a good show um, and I would recommend other adults to watch it. Don't watch it with your kids. Um, <laughs> and definitely don't let them watch it on their own. They get too many ideas, and I don't need nobody to catch pace. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, KB, um, your last round. Okay, so I feel I've learned a lot, and I think I know the reason why for me, some of these type of shows, I hesitate to do. Because even in the conversation of my peers who we respect and we have this maturity to take on dialogue, it can become very confusing. And I feel like any platform, any show, any movie, any time that you're going to go public with something, it needs to be thought out. And I think what happened with all the commercial um, shows that he has done, Grownness, Mixedish, Blackish, all those things, there were lines. And I'm going to say something, and I'm so glad it's at the end so it won't be a debate, but I said something to someone today that I feel like in my Black community, where there are no lines, sometimes we lose control. Mm. Mm. Okay, I agree. I agree. Okay. Miss Keela, end of the day, what do you think about Black AF? I enjoyed Black AF. I thought it was very entertaining. I laughed. I looked at it um, just like it was just entertainment, something that I would watch on HBO Showtime, you know, something after dark, after the kids go to bed, the kids I don't have. So, <laughs> <Damn>. um, <laughs> Right. I'm just glad I'm really <laughs> umbrella. I'm really glad that um we didn't go the colorism route. I'm glad that nobody had that opinion because I had when I was doing some research and stuff to see what people were saying about this, I was very interested in what people were saying. Um that is the majority of what I was finding is that it was talking about colorism and I'm glad that we were able to critique a piece of black art in a way that's just on the merit of whatever that show is. You know, the characters, the plots, and you know, all of that stuff. So I'm glad that's the way that our conversation went. Awesome, awesome. Greg, last thoughts, Black AF. Black AF, I'll tell you right now, it was powerful because it really, it showed things that some of us like. It showed things that some of us hate. But at the end of the day, I loved it because it 
flip flop. It put Hollywood and everything else. It flip flopped it like it, it messed with their heads because mm. now you got a black man directing something that's all black, all black, made fun of everything that you see in a white sitcom. We as black people know for a fact we are not gonna talk to our parents that way. Right. We're not gonna do none of that. But yet he still did it. And then he had Tyler Perry on the motherfucker. <laughs> she said last I week. mean that that's yeah, the whole exactly, right? conversation. But <laughs> like it, it it flipped things on a different parallel. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we can do this. Right. We can have these shows. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, we have to do it through Netflix and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. All we got to do is tone the cussing down. And that's really it. Tone the cussing down. Because even in... If you watch Full House, they talk back to their parents. And we mm -hmm. were still like, in, in, in our kid age, well, we wouldn't talk to our parents that way. We was doing that with Full House. Mm, true. We cannot let this man be silenced. And we have to grow from it. We can create family type shows and make money directing writing scripting producing we can make money that way but I like the way he did it alright so in the end everybody of course all what you got to say is not always going to agree on the outcome of stuff that we discuss. But what I will say, like I said, at the end of the day, I didn't like way more stuff than I did. So Black AF is going to be a no for me. Um, I give props to him trying to do this in the way that he saw fit. Just wasn't my cup of tea or my cup of wine or whatever the case may be. But I think that one of his episodes um, um, explains and explains what he was doing and that w w is the one that he had with Tyler Perry. So when he was speaking with Tyler Perry to go discuss another um, director's uh, movie that he didn't like and everybody else liked, Tyler Perry said to him, I don't give a damn about rotten fresh None of that means anything to me. I super serve my niche. We speak a language. We are talking. We know each other. We get it. So at the end of the day, I agree with that statement. He served whoever he needed to serve. He did it in his niche. But me and him, we're not speaking the same language. Mm -hmm. But more power to him on all of his other future endeavors. And last but not least, in the words of my homeboy, Common, if I don't like it, I don't like it. That don't mean that I'm hating. All right, so this is episode number seven of What You Got to Say. We see you later, homies. Hey.